Why are over 5,000 year old paleo observatories being found all over the world? How does the sun impact the planets and climate? What is happening with the sun right now? What are scientists saying? What do we need to do today to reach a new level of science? Watch some new fascinating facts in this episode. A lot of ancient observatories are being found all over the world, which were built by a single template and oriented towards the sun. Angkor Wat in Cambodia, Abu Simbel in Egypt, structures on the Easter Island, Machu Picchu, Stonehenge in Great Britain, Tiawanako in Newgrange in Ireland, Archaeum in Russia, and a lot more. PhD in Physics and Mathematics, Pokorev Nikolai Gennadovich, claims that the way these objects are organized has a number of common features. If you look at the paleoastronomical structures from space, you can clearly distinguish their architectural structures. It is either circular or pyramidal. Besides that, the monumental structures are surprisingly oriented precisely towards the same points despite their different locations. Satellite and archaeological data show that these are the points of sunrise and sunset during the solstice equinox days, which had a very important meaning for the ancient people, since those points are the baseline for yearly cycle determination. Thus, the Mayan Indians achieved very high precision in their observation of celestial bodies by using a special method, observing the stars through long and narrow slots, the sites of observatories. The windows of observatories are directed towards the sunrise points during the days of spring and autumn equinoxes and summer and winter solstices. The sunlight goes through the observation camera only during specific days. Mayans knew the fact that everything is cyclic in the sky. The universe is a cycle inside of a cycle, or a wheel in the wheel. That's why a lot of scientists agree that all observatories are complexes of unique structures which represent devices of gigantic size. The geometric correctness of these structures allows us to detect all key moments of the sun movement with amazingly high precision. Observe planets of the solar system, determine the coordinates of celestial bodies, and detect all astronomically significant events in space. Special attention was given to observing constellations. By observing the movement of celestial bodies, the ancients noticed that the common allocation of stars in the sky remains intact, whilst the sun and planets move relative to the stars. For example, the movement of the Earth on its orbit during the year shows a monthly change in constellations against which the sun rises. The precession effect makes the spring point occur a little earlier each year, causing it to gradually pass through all zodiac signs. And each sign takes 2,160 years. So, the entire cycle takes 25,920 years. The direction of this precessional drift is opposite to the yearly movement of the sun. According to ancient astrology, today we are living at the crossroads at the end of the Pisces era and the beginning of the new era of Aquarius. Ancients paid special attention to this event since the change of eras is always accompanied by global climate changes. As the history professor Giorgio de Santillana says, the sun's position among the constellations at the vernal equinox was an indicator, a clock, counting down the cycle of precession, hours quite long at that, since on the equinox day, the sun is located within the same constellation for almost 2,200 years. Observation of the equinox procession played a special role among the ancient people because it's related to changes in climate cycles that were foreseen in advance. That's why the ancients built numerous observatories for observation of the celestial bodies. During our times, all this ancient knowledge of people of the world has been presented to people as mythology and ancient primitive beliefs. At the same time, inconvenient facts that affirms the knowledge of ancient people, not known until recent times by modern science, 
are not being commented on. The entire science is being built exclusively upon the materialistic mindset. In astrophysics, for example, to study astronomical events, analytical methods are often used for building models and theories and making predictions. Reading about these stories of these these civilizations that were destroyed by these cataclysms and then I, I know of course as we go along i can absolutely get into you know some of the structures like gobekli tepe that prove the purpose of what they were really looking for to do with their technology and their and their knowledge but what what we essentially find is that these these types of cycles they understood them they knew how to anticipate them occurring and so that was why they would align these temples, you know, true north and south, and to basically have this map of the cosmos. That was what the purpose of Gobekli Tepe in the Anatolia region of Turkey is. It's an astronomical temple. And that can be found all around the ancient world where the, the people there knew these stories of their ancestors. And they knew that these events were gonna happen. So what do they do? They're not like mapping today's time just to know when to go water the crops. They're mapping the heavens to know when the next disaster is coming. As we know, everything in the solar system lives according to specific rhythms, cycles, and laws. Recently, however, the sun has been behaving unpredictably. Many scientists started to speak about it more often. Nowadays, the sun activity is gradually decreasing. We are entering the fourth period of the low sun's activity. If this is correct, it has to lead to a decrease in the global temperature on the planet. At the same time, meteorologists claim and show data that the global temperature is increasing. Scientists don't know the reason for such behavior of the sun yet, nor the reason for anomalous climatic changes that are happening on Earth nowadays. Despite the inexplicability of many processes, science doesn't stand still. There are a lot of scientists nowadays who put forward more daring versions regarding the influence of various factors on the sun. The main reason for climate change on Earth is of course the changes happening on the sun. But climate change on Earth can also have galactic origins which relate to the sun and the solar system passing through the spiral arms of our galaxy. It's known that our spin around the galactic nuclei takes about 250 million years. Moreover, the intersection of the spiral arms is quasi-periodic with an interval of tens of millions of years. Apparently, this also influences the climate on Earth. Besides, it's also clear that Earth goes through changes independently from the influence of the Sun or the galaxy. There are changes that happen on Earth itself, like tectonic plate movement, some mountain formation processes, changes in volcanic activity, and the like. These also affect the Earth. And so, Nikolai Vladimirovich Lavelis and Alexei Yurovich Deteum, as a result of their multiple observations, figured out that the movement of the planets affects solar activity. It's believed that other planets affect Earth through the Sun. The evidence to that is the reaction of Lake Victoria to variable impulses from the solar system. It was unraveled that, when Jupiter comes closer to Earth in the middle of a sidereal period of its revolution around the Sun, which lasts 11.8 years, it leads to an increase in the water mass of the lake, and when the planets move away from each other, it leads to a decrease. Saturn's movement period, which takes about 29.4 years, is characterized by high amplitude fluctuations of the lake during the convergence period. The same can be observed with Uranus. Based on generalized indicators, both the 22-year and 11-year cycles of solar activity influence the state of Lake Victoria. Giant planets can also influence the number and strength of earthquakes through the sun. Doctor of Technical Science, Zalman Efimovich Filer says in his scientific article, The Sun and Earthquakes, Before the Earthquake in Haiti, which happened on January 12, 2010, with the magnitude of 7, a continuous increase of solar activity was registered. And right before the earthquake, the speed of solar activity was the highest. It's not the magnitude of solar activity that influences the processes on Earth, but rather the speed it changes with. So for example, in February 2011, three of the most powerful during the last seven years burst of solar activity were registered in just one week. In less than five days, the level of solar activity doubled. And already, on March 11, 2011, 
an earthquake with a magnitude of 9, happened in Japan, which caused a tsunami. The common trigger for the phenomena happening in the lithosphere is the fast processes ongoing in the photosphere and deep layers of our sun, which are in turn stimulated by changes in the location of the bodies of the solar system, primarily the giant planets Jupiter and Saturn. While the movement of tectonic plates depends on the state of the Earth's core, According to the research done by Yuri Vladimirovich Barkin, professor and doctor of physical and mathematical sciences, the core actively participates in the formation of change of the planet's climate. Natural relative oscillations of the core and mantle lead to deformations of all layers of the mantle, and to cyclical release of heat which affects the activity of oceanic and atmospheric processes. The moon, the sun, and other planets control the oscillations and movement of our planet's core. In this, unity and interconnectedness of all planets of the solar system is reflected, including synchronicity of their natural processes. For example, in 97 through 98, simultaneous leaps in the variations of natural processes happened on the Sun, Moon, Earth, and Mars, and other bodies of the solar system. A simultaneous excitation of the core of the mentioned bodies happened which had a gravitational impact on all layers and natural processes. The gravitational oscillation of the core and mantle affects the warming and cooling inversion of climatic changes in the northern and southern hemispheres on all planets. As a result, we can see that all geological, geophysical, and geodynamic processes have a cyclic nature and happen simultaneously. And yet what do we observe today? They again keep saying that all these climate changes are the consequences of the anthropogenic factor, that people are to blame. And what do they suggest? To fight. Yes, yes to fight. That's the key point. And so I wonder, how are they going to fight? To cover the glaciers with blankets? Or what? Well, now we know that in New York, they basically offer to build walls against hurricanes. Well, they want to build walls… In the next 25 years. To save yes. New York, yes. But somehow they have planned for such a long term, for 25 years. Yes. Surely, to build in next 25 years. Maybe the idea is not bad. Who will build these walls in 25 years and who will need them in New York? It's a simple question. Everything is changing and happening so interestingly. Time passes very fast and catastrophic changes always come much faster than people would like to. Well, I will return to the topic of we have to fight with these climate changes. Already changes. We must stop them. It's impossible. We can adapt and make some changes. We can save humanity. But it is already unrealistic to stop all the changes that have already occurred, yet they entail a number of other changes. Again, there is no doubt that people have greatly affected the ecology. Humanity has not affected the climate. It is a cyclical process, and many scientists know about this. Thank God, many people are already talking and talking openly. Geodynamic and seismic activity is also connected to cosmic factors. Boris Gavrilovich Tarasov, doctor of technical sciences, discovered that seismic activity on Earth is influenced by heterogeneity of cosmic space and location of the planets of the solar system in relation to the Sun and the center of the galaxy. He writes in his work, there are power links between the Sun and the center of the galaxy. So when the planets pass between them, at the point of perihelion, for Earth it is June 23rd, the day of the summer solstice. These links are disturbed. This leads to an increased solar activity and weakening of the Sun's magnetic field, which in turn leads to Earth's expansion and slowing of its rotational speed. Another scientist, Rotem Alexei Yurovich, explains this with the influence of breaking force arising during the convergence of celestial bodies. In his opinion, this is the result of inertial movement of the Earth's core, as evidenced by the annual maximum frequency of earthquakes. When the planet passes the aphelion point, the furthest point, winter solstice, the magnetic field intensity is at its maximum. The speed of rotation restores. Earth at this time is compressed by gravitational and magnetic forces. Solar activity is minimal, and the Sun's magnetic field increases. All planets have their own year, and the times of solstices and equinoxes can be differentiated, in which, like Earth, each planet causes seasonal fluctuations in solar and geodynamic activity. 
the planet being the point of perihelion, causes an increase in solar activity, which in turn causes a decrease in the level of world ocean and a rise of groundwater levels. This weakens the connection between lithospheric plates and stability of slopes and escarpments. Being at the aphelion point, the planet affects the decrease in solar activity. The intensity of geomagnetic field and the gravitational potential of the Earth is restored. The Earth is compressed, which is accompanied by relative displacements of geological structures. Both the expansion and contraction of the Earth affect the increase in seismic activity. External gravitational influence on all liquid substances. We are no longer surprised by high and low tides. The influence of other planets. Planet parade. When all planets line up, Position of Earth on its orbit, the aphelion point, the perihelion point, how close or how far we are from the Sun. The most powerful earthquakes seem to happen in December. The most powerful, the worst earthquake happened in 2004, in the Indian Ocean, when a tsunami washed away 300,000 people. This was in December, in Armenia, in 1988. There was an earthquake in December. This is what's happening. Earth approaches with its south pole, goes ahead, closer to... And here, it not only experiences a stronger gravitational pull of the Sun, but it also changes its direction of movement. Meaning, if you try to run in one direction, and then quickly turn around and run back, you wouldn't feel very good. This is where all these cracks and faults come from. Earth starts to squeak everything expands. This is why very powerful earthquakes happen so often in December. But in the aphelion point, oddly enough, Sergei Viktorovich Belov, geologist, gives such statistics. He figured out the month when volcanic eruptions happen the most, in June. And this is when we are in the aphelion point. The same situation. We did fly far away, but it's the same turning moment. So if we observe some sort of impact on such processes – earthquakes, volcanic eruptions – then it's not the gravity that affects, but the reversal, the change of vector. Galaxies of the local group, the Andromeda Galaxy and the Magellanic Clouds can also affect the tectonic movement on Earth. Researchers at the Institute of Geology – Alexander Pushkin, Vyacheslav Rimkovich determined that the other galaxies affect Earth, not directly but through the Sun, by their gravitational forces. They cause deviations in the movement of the Sun which in turn affect Earth. Such influence by the Sun causes oscillations of the Earth's core, which results in the movement of the tectonic plates. The solar system, being between the Andromeda Galaxy and the Magellanic Clouds, caused the emergence of strong gravitational forces on Earth which leads to the formation of the largest mountains on Earth, the Himalayas. The growth of the Himalayan mountains has not stopped, as evidenced by the constant earthquakes. Academician Nikolai Vasilovich Petrov writes in his scientific work, the solution to the problem of climate change on Earth from the position of the law of preservation of the life in space, constancy of environmental parameters above the planet's crust, including the climate, has an oscillatory rhythm of change, one of which coincides with the period of 26,000 years, corresponding to a zodiac year, or one spiral of the solar system among the stars, in the progressive motion around the center of the galaxy which is a period of 217 million years. It turns out that during one period of circulation around the galaxy center, the solar system completes over 8,000 zodiacal turns of spiral trajectory. Due to this, there is a rhythm of change in the polarity of the external magnetic field in relation to the moving solar system. Every 13,000 years, our planetary system moves from one sign of the magnetic field of the Milky Way to another. At the points of the equinox, or at the bifurcation points, the Lion constellation and Aquarius constellation. This means that the regulator of the energetic state of the solar system in general, and of the rhythmic climate change on Earth, in particular is the informational magnetic field of the galaxy. The galaxy is a single electromagnetic system that interacts with all objects in the galaxy, including the solar system. Any small change in the galaxy affects the Sun 
and as a result it affects all processes, not only on Earth, but also on the other planets of the solar system. The Earth is not the only planet in the solar system that is undergoing climate change. The growth of dark spots on Pluto and the polar shifts in Uranus, changes in the light intensity of Neptune, the melting ice caps on Mars make it clear that changes are taking place throughout the solar system. Proof that CO2 is not the main driving force of the warming on our planet is in fact that other planets and satellites of the solar system, which obviously do not have any anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions, are being heated at the same time. Mars, Triton, Pluto, and Jupiter are all demonstrating global warming. For more information, watch Breaking News, Global Warming in the Entire Solar System. Thus, many factors affect the Sun and the Solar System. These factors need to be taken into account as they influence climate change. As stated in the report of scientists in the Alatra Science on the problems and consequences of global climate change on Earth, effective ways to solve these problems. The mistake was that many scientists of the past years did not take into consideration the influence of the increasing acceleration of the universe, cosmic factors, and astronomical processes on the condition of the global climatic system of this planet. All this naturally is affecting not only the Sun, but also the other planets of the solar system, including such a giant as Jupiter, not to mention our planet. The global climate change on Earth is mostly a derivative of astronomical processes and their cyclicity. This cyclicity is inevitable. The geological history of our planet indicates that the Earth has already repeatedly experienced such phases of global climate change. Now on Earth, we see the number of climate catastrophes is increasing, which every inhabitant of the planet will face sooner or later. We already know that these events will only increase in number, because this is the next 12,000 year cycle that we are living through. And the ancient legends of the peoples of the world attempted to warn us about this in the form of ancient calendars, rhymes, and tales. As stated in the report of scientists of Alatra Science on the problems and consequences of global climate change on Earth, effective ways to solve these problems. We understand that the sun is not the only cause of climate change, that these are cyclical processes in space and which are constantly occurring, and as a result influence the planet in the form of climate disasters. And we, as humanity, have just entered the active phase of this cycle. Today, scientific and technological progress does not allow us to control global processes in space and on Earth. As a consequence, we cannot prevent these changes. Therefore, the only chance to survive is to unite and prepare for the upcoming disasters, which are growing in power every day. The Alatra platform has been created to unite the entire world community on the eight foundations of a creative society. The construction of a creative society is already taking place, a society where the human is placed first. Where there is friendship, humanity, respect, and mutual understanding, people from all over the world join Creative Society Project every day. And in science and in such a society, we will be able to reach a new level due to the unity of all sciences with the knowledge of primordial Latra physics. Let's unite and build a society where every human is happy. Actually, the creative society, how do you envision it? I mean, who is this society focused on? On a person. The creative society, in my opinion, of course, there are as many opinions as there are people, but again, the creative society is simple. It's very comfortable and convenient for a person. Why? Because it is focused on a person's benefits and freedoms, and that's the entire meaning of the creative society. There are no lies there, no deception, and most importantly, there is no power, because a person has all the power. There is no superstructure over him. And again, what do we return to? To the integrity of our attention, where all of us together invest it. If we want to live well, if we want to live worthy of a human being, then we should invest our attention precisely in this, that is, our time and our efforts, in building the future for ourselves and, let's say, for our children and descendants. If we approach this from the perspective of the present day, then it is actually very easy to build a creative society. I'll put it this way, if we really want this, 
and everyone who has understood the entire meaning and essence of the creative society that we are going to talk about now, then it's realistic to build it within 10 years. 10 years. Great. And we will live in this creative society. But again, it depends on people, on their desires and aspirations. If we do nothing and set our hopes on someone else that someone will do this, it won't be built, because the creative society is precisely the task of all people. It's not just a task of, for example, some idea-driven fellows who are supposed to do something for someone, but it's a task of each and every one of us. It is our task.